morning and welcome to Stitched Up Weekend of Volume 2. So it's Friday and I'm not at work. I have finished my locum uh, contract now, which was, which is very, very welcomed because it means I have more time off, which is fantastic. So we have a very exciting weekend ahead of us in lockdown, would you believe, but it is very exciting. So exciting that I didn't sleep last night, not very well anyway. But um, before I get to that, I have been really poorly this week. I've been off work since Monday afternoon, really, well, Tuesday, because I woke up Monday morning and felt dreadful. Um, I had headache, I felt really sick, I was dizzy, and it just got worse and worse. So I haven't been to work all week, and um i've ended up with i've had vertigo basically i've had vertigo before a number of years ago now and um, i was quite poorly with it then i've not been as bad this time but certainly bad enough to not be able to do much apart from veg on the sofa and do a bit of knitting so uh so yeah i've had a bit of a a bit of an awful week it means i haven't done any running i haven't run at all since last sunday which is not like me at all because i'm used to running almost every day now and I've really missed it, but I have just not been well enough at all. But I'm feeling a lot better. I'm not 100%. Makeup does wonders. But I'm certainly 100% better than I was earlier on in the week, which is great news because today we have a very exciting collection. So those of you that have been following me for some time will know that we had a dog we got a puppy about 18 months ago now called marley and if you look back through my vlogs in my channel eons back you will see the vlog where i introduced marley unfortunately marley didn't stay with us for very long and at the time he appeared quite frequently on those vlogs when he came to us and we sadly lost him not long after we'd got him now at the time, obviously, that was really devastating. It's always devastating to lose a much-loved pet anyway, isn't it? But I think especially when they're so young. And we got him quite early in his life. Um, I think he was about nine, ten weeks old, something like that. And I couldn't really talk about it at the time. It was too upsetting. Um, now, you know, it's things have moved on. It's, it's different. But we've had that void in our lives. And I wanted to just tell, talk to you a little bit more about Marley and the background. So prior to Marley, we had a Vimarana and I've loved Vimaranas for years. And we got our first Vimarana, our first dog actually, when Isaac was two years old. And we, he was a proper purebred um, Vimarana from a registered breeder, really high standards, fantastic, fantastic family dog, grew up with our children and sadly passed away four years ago this month and he was an amazing pet amazing family dog now martin really wanted to get another vimarana and it took us a long time to get over milo's death and to be honest i don't think we still have i think you know he grew up with our children so it was like having another child if i'm honest and um yeah, we miss him dreadfully, but Martin wanted another Vimarana and I couldn't face it. After losing Milo, I felt that it would be too much of, it would just hurt too much to have another breed, another a dog of the same breed. So last year when the opportunity came up, well, it wasn't last year actually now, was it? It was the year before. Oh, was it last year? Oh my word, I can't, the time just runs away with you, doesn't it? I can't remember. It was the year before, it was about yeah October time I think it was but anyway um when the opportunity arose to get Marley we you know I I fell in love with the Beagle breed felt it was very similar to a Vimarana you know could be an active dog and I we went for it unfortunately we were misled to a degree in which I didn't go into at the time because um it it didn't in the grand scheme of things feel that relevant but we were misled to a degree that when we arrived at the breeder's house we thought we were um purchasing a pure breed which we were we did well i don't know to be honest but it was very clear when we got to the the house um the seller's house that these 
poor little dogs were actually just being puppy farmed with no respect to the breed standards or to the health of the um, the animals at all and unfortunately at the time you know despite all my instincts Isaac was madly in love with Marley and yeah I didn't want to let him down so we we went ahead with it and we I think we felt that we were taking Marley out of a, a, a quite horrible environment I guess and we wanted to give him a good life and unfortunately as I'm sure lots of you probably know or if you've not experienced it yourselves will probably know somebody that has or have certainly read about it that you know dogs that aren't brought up with you know good lineage and good heritage can end up with all sorts of health problems and it very quickly became apparent that my uh, Marley to get you have to get this right that Marley had um had some health problems which sadly led to a very premature um end of his life which was horrible so anyway moving on I'm, i know i'm waffling here but i just want to give you the background and i feel now i'm at a point where i can moving on um obviously we've we came to terms with losing marley it didn't impact us probably as much as losing milo because he was with us for 12 years of his life which you know um that's a big part of your life isn't it so but moving forward time is a healer as they say it is and we felt ready to you know welcome another dog into our lives and i felt ready to look at a vimarana again because he is my first my first love i love the breed i when we got milo the reason we went for a vimarana was because i wanted to run with a dog and vimaranas are very active dogs they love running and being active and being outside and that's what we are as a family and he used to go running with me until he was too frail to be able to do that and yeah i'm now at a point where i think i can have another vimarana without it constantly reminding me of milo that we lost so we are picking up our eight week old puppy today and i'm going to take you with me so it's really exciting i didn't sleep last night i'm so excited we this time um found we've been we've actually been looking for quite some time probably about a year i would say not long after we lost marley i think we started thinking about it and we've been looking for a year but obviously there's been the pandemic there's been lots of issues with people i'm not sure what it's like in other countries but certainly in the uk people jumping onto buying dogs because they were all working from home and people can't going out and people can't go out and wanting that companionship etc and we didn't want to jump on that bandwagon because we know what having a Vimarana entails we had one for 12 years and um we wanted to make sure it was the right decision for us we wanted to find a good breeder this time we weren't going to get swayed by anything less and unfortunately the breeder that we we got Milo through 16 years ago now is no longer breeding um, but we did find a very good breeder who is very local to us who has extremely high standards and they were expecting a litter at the end of Christmas end of Christmas end of December and they had 350 inquiries for their puppies and we were very very fortunate to be chosen and that boils down to the fact that we've had a Vimarana before and we know how to um, work with that breed. So it turns out that the litter that they have had, one of the descendants of the sire is actually Milo's father, which is even more heartwarming because when you will see, I'm going to put some pictures in of Milo, who was our beloved Vimarana that we lost four years ago and a picture of Piper who is our puppy who we're picking up today I'm going to put the pictures up now so you can see and the resemblance is absolutely uncanny even as Piper being a young puppy I can see the resemblance and it feels like we've got part of Milo back 
I'm actually tearing up now talking about this, but yeah, so it's a very exciting day. Isaac is upstairs at the minute. It is quarter past nine. Um, sorry about this. So it's quarter past nine. Isaac has a college lesson at the minute. And then when that's finished, we're going to head over to collect our little puppy and bring him home. And yeah, you're going to see the chaos that ensues for this weekend. So I thought I would do a... A vlog this weekend to you know experience the first few days with a puppy in our lives again and um, you're gonna get to meet him right so we're on our way on our way to pick up Piper aren't we are you excited very excited yes yeah <laughs> he is very excited even though he's probably not showing it so much um, yeah. <laughs> so he's just finished his photography lesson, haven't you? Yeah, got a lot of work done. Yeah. Beautiful morning. Really sunny. It's not very warm though, it's only six degrees and I've not put a coat on, but you you're sat and there you with a t-shirt. T-shirt. T-shirt t-shirt and shorts. It's not that bad. <laughs> Do you not think? Um, it is cold, but it's not yeah. like as bad as it as bad as it has been. At least it's sunny. Um, yeah, so we've got about a... I'm going totally the wrong way, Isaac. Oh, yeah, you are. <laughs> I'm going the wrong way. <sighs> Shall we turn round? Oh, well, there's a roundabout. There's a roundabout up here. We'll turn round and we'll go the right way. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's about 12 mile, a 12 mile... A 12-mile... Drive. Drive, that's the word, yeah. to get to uh, where we need to pick up our little puppy from our breeders. I'm going to just confuse all the drivers now because I'm going to do a really big around the roundabout. There we go. Right, so we'll go the right way yeah. and we'll see you when we get there. Are we going to say hello? Are we saying hello? Are you going to say hello to everybody? This is Piper and it's his first day in his new home and he's just eaten his tea. So we're going to have a little play and then we're going to take him outside. But he's had a lovely afternoon. He's been sleeping on his new bed in front of the fire. He's been having a good nosy around his new surroundings. Chewing the carpet. Uh, he's already got his little bed. And You're chilled, aren't you? He's very chilled. He's got a lovely, lovely temperament, haven't you, sweetheart? You cute little boy. Yes, we love him very much. Here he is. Here's Papa. This is our lovely little eight week old Vimarana Piper, who's just beautiful, aren't you? He's absolutely gorgeous. Very friendly, very affectionate, very chilled. He's settling in really nicely, isn't he? And uh, yeah, thought you'd all like to meet him and say hello. Say hello, Piper. You can say hello. No, not really. He's probably going to get Pip for short. Piper when he's being naughty, but he hasn't been naughty. He didn't sleep very well last night, did he? No. Um, he was yeah. very, very, uh, yeah. He's always going to be Piper. Very lonely. He's got rather huge paws, as you can see. Yes, his paws are rather large. I think he thinks he's a lion, not a dog. But he's beautiful. He? He's going to sleep. Is he going to sleep? Yeah. I'm not surprised because he was awake most of the night, weren't you? Yeah. He's doing that, struggling to keep his eyes open. He's beautiful. I'm just looking forward to the day he'll be big enough that he can come running with me. That'll be amazing. But we're going to be, a, that's a long time off just yet. Right, I'll put him down. So I'll put you down and then you can go. Piper, sit. Good boy, clever boy. Who's clever? Piper, come on. Who's a good boy?
What did he do? Bit my nose. Did he? Yeah. What are you doing? But why is the flash on? It's the... <laughs> See, there is open. Yeah. Do you, do you mind? Say good morning, Judy. <laughs> I'm running with uh, Maggie, which is one of Judy's dogs. I'm sorry if this is shaky, but obviously I'm running at the moment. So I've come across to Judy's, met her at this lovely wood, which is near where Judy lives. And uh, we're doing the temple run this morning. So it's about we five. Can't see it at the moment, can we? No, it's a little bit foggy. Uh, quite cool. When I got in my car this morning, it was minus four. But uh, once the sun burns through, it will be beautiful and uh, absolutely glorious. Yeah, so. Yeah, it's stunning, isn't it? So this loop is about 5k. And uh, yeah, I'm getting used to running with the dog so that when Piper's old enough, but there's going to be about a year yet, be able to run with him which will be amazing. Right, I'll stop giving you a headache by shaking the camera and we'll see you when we get back. So I just wanted to stop and show you the snowdrops. we just come back through the woods at the end of our run. It's, uh, it's lovely, there's Judy and Poppy. And we've got Maggie here. Poppy's going, Maggie's pulling me. We've had a lovely run, it's been so, such a beautiful morning. Uh, so I'm going, uh, going to go back and head home, leave Judy, go home and get my porridge and then hopefully uh, get some sewing done today. So I'm going to be working on the Valley Drum Soup by Peppermint Magazine, which is a new pattern that's come out this week. I think I showed you it actually the other night. Okay. Ah, this is the one. Look at it. It's like a sea of white. It's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah, I don't know if you can just see the crocuses. A little bit of uh, purple, just yeah, just in the centre of that. Belt, I think it goes down as far as you, doesn't it? Yeah, I've yeah. We've down got in, some. We've um, got some. Carlton as well. Oh, there's just tons in great Carlton. Big, yeah, like natural snowdrop belt. Yeah, it's lovely. It's the only snow we get. Oh. We Right, so it's Sunday. I am back from my run from Judy's and I've had a shower. I've got my sagebrush dress on. I've just put a little sneaky peek of it on Instagram. So this is a dress, uh, no, this is the sagebrush top that I packed into a dress. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna do a separate vlog on it. So, because I absolutely love it, it's gorgeous. And I saw this fabric and just had the idea. So yeah, there's that. And um, yeah, I've come home from Judy's with some fabrics. So she's de-stashing. She's got a few fabrics that she decided she didn't, um, she was never gonna use. So I've gone through them and I've chosen one, two, three, four, five, five of those. And I thought I would show you my fabrics that I got from Walton's as well yesterday, what I picked up from their Click and Collect. And then I am going to get some sewing done because it's Sunday afternoon. We've got roast pork in the oven. It smells divine. Piper is, as you've just seen, on his back, spark out, um, enjoying himself and living the life of Riley. He is, yeah, very settled in now and he's just a joy, an absolute joy. So let me change the battery because it's flashing at me and then I'm going to show you the fabrics and then we will get some cutting out done. Right, so I've got you balanced on the sewing machine. Hopefully you won't fall off. Right, so Walton's first. So yesterday, I think I mentioned that they're doing click and collect before they reopen next month. So I called off on my way home from work and I'd already ordered these fabrics. I bought four from them. So two crepes, a linen and then a jersey. So I'm gonna show you the crepes first. This is the first one, which is this really lovely leopard print it's really gorgeous actually it's got lovely drape on it and this has been pre-washed i've just well washed it yesterday and i have no idea what it's going to be i bought three meters of it it was four pounds a meter 
and it's lovely and it doesn't crease which is just amazing so that's the first one i also got this crepe which again is just beautiful again four pounds a meter i think i've got three meters it's in the address of some sort but i don't know what i really like that it's beautiful beautiful colors again lovely drape on it and no creasing and then i bought this linen cotton mix which is gorgeous it's more linen than definitely more linen than cotton but obviously you don't get the creasing like you do with 100 percent linen so it's a blue and white fine sort of ticking stripe um really pretty i've got four meters of this because i have decided that this is what i'm going to make the valley jumpsuit out of that i was trying to get out of some different fabric the other night so this is what i'm going to get sewn up this afternoon so that's that one and then finally you might recognize this fabric so this is one of the tilly and the buttons jerseys and waltons have got this one and they've also got the one that looks like I think of, you know, the toddler shape sort of things with all the different shapes that they put in holes. There's like a semicircle and a star and a heart and all that sort of thing. You know, the black one that's got those sort of prints on it. They've got that one and they've got this one. And these are, this is obviously cotton jersey, organic cotton jersey. It's beautiful. £4.50 a metre. So I got two metres of this one. I didn't get the other one because that's not to my taste, but I do like this. I think it's really lovely print. So yeah, that was a bit of a bargain, wasn't it? So they, those were the ones I got from Walton's that I picked up on my way home from work. And then, as I say, this morning, Judy said she was going to do a de-stash. And I said, well, t show me what you're de-stashing because I might have some off you. So I've bought these ones off her. Um, the first one is the cable knit jersey. Hopefully you can see that this is in navy blue i know it looks like it's coming up quite black but it isn't navy blue like a midnight blue it's beautiful it's very very soft i don't know how much is here but probably at least two meters i think so i think this is going to be a cardigan and then the next one is this gorgeous jersey uh beautiful beautiful print it is so soft this has got like a brushed effect to it it's really really soft so i think i'm going to make an audrey top from sew over it out of that one because I've not made that yet and I fancy having a go at that because I like the one with the little necktie and the next one I have got is this double gauze in like a sort of steely blue colour with these little um they look like dandelion clocks don't they so I've got that one from her as well and then next up is this one which is a stretch sateen in this lovely white and orange colour beautiful so that is going to be the average seamstress dress i'm not sure which one it's the one that's got the scoop back hopefully i've got enough of that to make that because i just think that will be beautiful for summer and then finally the last one that i've got from judy is this one which is a lovely white it's like a georgette crepe but it's quite a decent weight with i think they're navy are they navy or are they black they might be black black or navy spots really pretty so this is going to be a blouse of some sort i think it will either be an anderson blouse or a pussy boat blouse of some sort because i think that will just look so lovely in that so that was great go for a run with judy and come home with fabric so loads and loads of new fabrics that i've got this weekend and um now i need to i've just ironed the linen cotton actually the stripe and i'm gonna get that cut out so hopefully we can start sewing that up Phew, cutting out's done. Trousers, top, pockets, three pieces, that's it. Apart from a little bit of interfacing, which I now have to just interface the button band and, um, yeah, the button button band and button stand. Is that right? Yeah, something like that anyway. Um, so, yeah, need to interface that and then get my sewing machine set up and we can get this sewn together. I've got loads of fabric left, but... I needed the full four meters to be able to get these pieces cut out. So there's um, because it's all cut out on a single fold. No, it's not on a it's not on a fold at all. It's just on a single layer of fabric. It means I've got a strip like that down one side, which is um, spare. But there's going to be enough to make shorts out of. I think at least. So that will be cool. Right, let's uh, get this bit interfaced and then we'll start sewing. When we wake, hear the 
birds and see the sun Side by side our fears are done All the good times just begun Oh, we know what we have, let's hold on tight Found what we Bias tape I have to make now. It didn't tell me that at the beginning. It's a good job I've got lots of fabric left. With you and I, the future is on my phone because my memory card is full so i'm really sorry about the flash but i hope you can see um i've got it finished and i do really like it i think it's really nice i think the pocket placement is probably too low to be perfectly honest but the pocket placement is exactly where it is is um highlighted on the pattern i have chosen these really nice i don't know if you can see them really nice they're sort of like a blue navy blue tortoise shell button that I had in my stash, I have made a major error in the fact that because I lengthened this, I had to add in extra buttonholes and I created a buttonhole here, which is literally on my stitching line for the waist. So that's a bit annoying, but I was gonna sew a button. Well, I did have a button sewn on to be fair and I've had to take it out. So it means now I've got four bot four buttons and I always like an odd number rather than even, but I'm thinking that you can't really notice it. So hopefully that's not gonna be too much of an issue. I love the fact that because I've used a stripe and this is a seamless, um, pattern, seamless pattern pieces, the you can see obviously the stripe is going horizontal on my arms because they're all cut in one piece and i quite like that effect and likewise the back is chevroned hopefully you can see that um i added a tie around the neck and i'm not totally happy with the neck i think it has stretched out a little bit um you can see there's just a little bit of a bulge there obviously the buttons all undo because they need to to be able to get this off but i'm going to stand you on the window ledge and stand back a little bit so that you can have a better look Right, so, um, loose thread there, but yeah, I do I do really like it. I think you can obviously have the legs, um, legs are sort of ankle length and you can have them turned up. And I think I probably will do that because I just like that look, but I think, you know, as a casual sort of jumpsuit, it's, uh, it's quite nice really. I love the chevron effect 
at the back i think that's really really nice this fabric is so beautiful and i think it's going to be lovely for um spring and summer and uh yeah i uh i really like it there i love how that chevron goes i mean you've got to think about um fabric choices for this because if you've got anything with a directional print then the the direction of the print on the front will be very different it's going to be sort of diagonal on the back so you do need to think about that but um yeah the crotch is probably just a little bit too low but i've got the waist bang on by lengthening the waist by an inch and as i say the crotch is probably just a little bit too low it could probably do with just coming up just a little bit so i may i think really you know it needs to be probably about there so that's probably an inch. I need to take about an inch out of the crotch, I think, and just add that length onto the leg length instead, which is unusual for me because normally I have to lengthen um, crotch depths, but I really didn't need to in this pattern. I'm glad I went with this size. This was not the size recommended for me. It's actually very oversized and I probably, according to my measurements, probably should have done uh, the next size up no to even two sizes up from what i've done but i'm really glad i've gone with this size because i think this size is is bang on really because i've still got plenty of movement and plenty of room and plenty of ease but um but you know it's it's not too oversized so as i say it's just a bit annoying that that crotch depth is just probably just a bit too low um but it's very wearable and free pattern at the end of the day so the sleeves are just turned up twice and stitched on my sewing machine same with the legs i've used three quarters of an inch elastic in the waist i don't tend to like elastic waists and if i do elastic waists i tend to like a really deep elastic so that it still highlights your waist um buttonholes went in fine i really like it so i'm going to sign off now and um, go chill out with my pup but I hope you've enjoyed this week's sewing weekender and I will be back with you really soon take care bye